Hi class, so today I want to show you how to transfer your image onto your linoleum block and get it prepared for carving. So this is a drawing that I did of a uh, mountain scene and so you can see I've actually I've traced the image, I had lined it up with tracing paper and I traced all of the details out in black sharpie, the thin black sharpie. That way I can flip over the drawing when I line it up to my linoleum block for transfer. So I have my block in place. I have some transfer paper. All of you guys have some transfer paper with you. Yours I believe is white. You cut it down to size of your block. It should make it pretty easy to line up the drawing portion. This could be very important if you go in to do multiple plates that you have different layers of color. For this, we're just doing one color layer. So I take and I have my drawing. I flip it over to the back side. We want to make sure to do that, especially if there's any words, because your image is obviously going to be need to be carved backwards in order to print right reading. So I'm lining this up, and you can see that it's easier to line up with this black outline around it, and also having your transfer paper be to size. And I'm going to tape again my tracing paper so it doesn't move on me either. And then just with a pencil, I'm gonna go in and I am going to trace all these lines so that they transfer directly onto my block. traced everything out. Obviously you can hinge this up and look in between when you're in the middle of it, but here now I have all this information traced. There is a few little artifacts that have come off from my hand, but all of these are the main lines that I'm going to use to um, guide my drawing. And I'll show you. And this doesn't come off at all. And so now I've got the block ready to go. And then with the carving part, it's best to have a no slip mat underneath you and to put it somewhere kind of up in front of you. Your linoleum uh, carving tools that you have in your kit, they you can twist off this this little top part here and you can put all these different little uh, various carving tools into the into the groove there and you just lock them up individually. You have a blade tool in your kit. You also have a very small V gouge. That's one's great for detail. This is a larger U gouge. This is great for big open areas. You also have a medium sized V gauge, and this is kind of an in-between V and U middle size. So when you're starting with your carving, you want to think in terms of carving using the texture that happens with the carving, but this blade tool in particular, if you're wanting to carve out areas against a borderline like this, 
I would go in and I would always make sure my my less dominant hand is behind where my my dominant hand is carving and I would go in and I would start creating a pathway with the blade and this way you can always kind of turn it around to make sure it's safe for you to be carving and making sure that this is behind you and that you're just not carving towards your fingers and this all this area I know that I want this carved away and I'm going to be leaving these lines so this one's going to be a very kind of more delicate image that I'm working with so one thing I want to do when you're carving to I've created this path now then I want to go in say with a, a V tool and I want to clear away that area and you want again to kind of carve away from your hands always making sure your other hands behind you and then once you go up against that path it makes it easier to start cutting that out Curves are always a little bit more challenging. You want to go slow, and the best way to really deal with with um, carving so it's easier for you is just to make sure that this block's heated a little bit too. You can always throw it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, or heat it with a hair dryer, or even in the oven for 30 seconds, but make sure that you don't forget about it, obviously. And so I'm just kind of going to go in here and start cutting along that path. And again, there will be kind of moments where you slip a little bit, depending upon how hard the linoleum feels. And so you wanna be careful with that. When you're carving big open areas too, you can start to see some texture will just get created. This all needs to be oiled a little bit. There, say I use this big U gauge here, okay. And I end up starting to kind of carve away that open area. What gets created in there is these little texture marks with, with the shape of the, the actual tool head. And that is what's called chatter. Actually, little textures in there can pick up and create um, marks in your print, which look really beautiful. But you kind of want to work with those patterns instead of um, just trying to carve everything away. If you try and carve away everything to get it really white, you have to go pretty deep. But we are printing by hand, so you don't have to carve usually as deep as you would if you were printing by press. So you can use this U-shape one to get a lot of information out, okay? But I would say if you wanna come up, I say with some of these little lines, I'm going to create a path right along that line, okay? And maybe also at the one in the bottom here, and I'm gonna use, again, my, my V gouge to cut along that line. And what you really wanna do with this is you wanna make sure, I'm gonna use my little tool now. This is my little V gauge. And I'm gonna go up against, make sure that this is kind of with you here. And I'm turning it around so it's working for me. And always notice my hand is behind me, behind my carving. And I'm going up right against that path and I'm making sure it's at a 45 degree angle so it's not straight up and down but kind of carving at a side. That'll give enough material to hold that those little lines up. So you'll kind of notice in my notes that I put out for you on carving about dealing with certain issues of not going too far, straight up and down, carving at angles. Delicate lines are much more difficult. So this tool works really well for detail and for getting in and making small marks. And so I'm going to just start carving all of this away. I will show you in a next demo video how we print by hand, but basically look at some of the samples of the different types of um, block prints I have shared with you and see how they've created marks and textures. Um, really because this is a very flat contrasty type of process, 
It's really more about making variation in line and textures in order to make a really interesting dynamic piece. So enjoy the process and I will see you soon.